Hi guys, this is a video six month review of uh, owning a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. Um, in summary, it's been amazing. I am very happy I bought this beautiful machine. Um, uh, the engine is still running. Um, I'm here at a very beautiful place. It's uh, in Zeeland, uh, Ned the Netherlands. And you can see it's uh, at the Delta Dykes. Um, um, it's been amazing, but very costly. I've had a lot of costs. Um, I drove 10,000 kilometers and I paid also 10,000 euro in extra repair costs. All kind of things breaking down. So that's a pity, but it was definitely worth the money. Um, um, if you calculate the amount of smiles and looks you get per uh, euro or per dollar or per Bitcoin, you definitely made a good investment. But uh, you do burn a lot of Bitcoins <laughs> doing it. So, um, uh, yeah, um, I'm I just going to put the engine off uh, and talk a little bit more in detail. But first I'm going to show the car to you guys a little bit better. So uh, the engine is running, it makes a lot of noise here in the front uh, for uh, vent ventilation, I think, uh, to bring air to the engine. Um, I had a lot of, uh, I hit a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, bo uh, allez, um, uh, when you hit the side, the curves, the curves, curbs it's really not easy um, like here too eh? um, a lot a lot so but I'm not gonna do like every year I will repair those but not every half year so I'm going to drive till the winter and then uh, I'll repair it I also hit the side of a garage as you can see here uh, the yellow is a little bit damaged uh, and uh, I'm thinking also of doing uh, rep repairing that but that would I'm also going to do only once per year uh, repaint jobs uh, because um, otherwise, uh, otherwise I'm, uh, it's gonna cost me too much. Um, uh, I also did uh, a, a great modification, um, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, something with the, with the keys. So first, I'm gonna rev the engine so you can hear the engine. And then I'm gonna uh, turn it off. So, um, uh, you can hear a great sound. <laughs> I'll open the back window here. So uh, I'm gonna put it off. And, uh, the modification I did was uh, with the keys. Um, if you press uh, two times uh, opening the keys, then... Uh, oh no, four times, then you get... Um, Something fun and automatic. Ah, it's just the windows that went open. <laughs> yeah, three, four. Uh, this should. Uh, voila. The windows are up now, but I want the windows down. So I should push three times. Didn't work. Anyway, 
Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit more uh, about the car experience. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, uh, put. Uh, I'm not gonna sit in the car, otherwise there's gonna be too much wind, and you're gonna be annoyed with the wind. Let's sit here. All right, that's gonna be a lot better. So, um, um, yeah, a lot of things broke down with the car. Um, so, uh, suspension, one was leaking, so I had to replace that. And yeah, suspension, uh, I don't know nothing about cars, eh? so I can't compare with a normal car, but uh, uh, here a suspension, uh, new, just one, costs 2,000 euro. Eh, always plus, of course, VAT taxes eh, of 21% here in Belgium. It's, uh, in, in, in most parts of Europe, it's uh, very high taxes. And... Um, so you end up paying then uh, not 2000 but 2400 uh, 400 euro taxes that's just for one suspension but you need to re they recommend to do two suspensions at the same time eh? um, uh, but yeah I didn't do that um, and then you have to install it eh? get the old one out new one in uh, another thousand two thousand euro um, um, but eh, the way I could cut on those costs was to find a second hand suspension. It's not 2,000, but 1,000 euro, and you avoid VAT taxes that way because um, it's second hand. Um, and, and, and that worked out, that's good. But then uh, a lot of other things broke uh, down, such as the steering uh, wheel, um, power steering, also was leaking. Uh, so I uh, also had to uh, find a second-hand part. Uh, I was lucky to find a second-hand part, otherwise it would be also another 2,000 euro. Now it was also just 1,000 then for that part. Um, and then um, uh, the gearbox suddenly uh, stopped working, so I couldn't go into first gear anymore, and so I had to like uh, tow it. And then of course, you don't have that many Lamborghini garages. I tried all the garages, but in the end, I wasn't very happy with the work. Uh, they did some good work, but um, they are not to do all everything on the car because they don't have the Lamborghini computers, which are then uh, only uh, Lamborghini service centers have those. And so um, then there's only one in Belgium, Lamborghini garage in Brussels and. Uh, but I like to shop around and uh, I had a good contact via the telephone in uh, one in the Netherlands so have to tow the car there uh, it cost me 400 euro uh, and then um, they fix uh, the gearbox um, and at the same time another error which was always popping up which was that the bank uh, the banks of the engine um, one five two and also six ten have a, a, a temperature sensor that uh, was always uh, uh, freaking out, uh, and so I had to replace those. Allez, another bill of four thousand euro. Eh? So that's um, um, and also you always like uh, end up losing the car one two weeks. So um, the problem is like I really bought this car as a daily driver. Uh, but I can tell you that that's, uh, that's not gonna happen. I mean, unless you have some another car, um, I, you can't really use these cars yet as a daily driver, which is a disappointment because that was really the promise of the Gallardo, which is uh, the baby Lamborghini, uh, the smaller version of the top models. Um, at the time, it was the Murcielago when this uh, Gallardo was first released in 2004. Um, and now it's the Aventador. Eh? Oh, both cars eh, costed about half a million new euro dollars, uh, but the Gallardo only 250, and um, the Promise or 200, or at the time it was only 180 actually, or 160. Uh, but these days the equivalent of the Gallardo which is the Hurricane um, will cost you around 200 250 uh, thousand euro uh, and thousand US dollars it's about the same um, 
so um, the Huracan is the same story. Yeah, it's the promise is that you can use it as a daily driver. But I'm I'm very curious. I think that is true for such cars when you buy them new. Right? The first couple of years, like two three years, and the first let's say um, twenty to forty thousand kilometers, you don't have many issues. But uh, the moment I think these cars become older than three four five years, and the moment you go over forty fifty sixty thousand kilometers, you end up having a lot of issues that's what I think is the case um, just like it is with normal cars normal cars uh, just uh, you can double the amount of kilometers or years eh? not the first two three years but let's say the first four five years and the first not say 50,000 kilometers but the first hundred thousand kilometers you have not a lot of issues with normal cars but after that you know you get the cars on the cheap that's true but at the same time a lot of things start to fail and need to be replaced that definitely has been my experience with the Gallardo. Um, so um, it's not really you can't really use it as a daily driver. I think the moment it's getting older than three years, or uh, the moment you uh, go over forty, fifty thousand kilometers. Um, but I have done so. But I don't drive daily. I drive every second day. Um, uh, but it has been a blast. I use it uh, to do shopping, to do everything uh, in Antwerp, Belgium, and uh, and it's really uh, a lot of fun. Uh, people uh, love the car generally. Uh, nine in ten responses are really good. You get a lot of thumbs up, smiles, kids uh, screaming. Uh, they love it, um, and. Um, and that's great sometimes you get um, uh, assholes uh, but it doesn't happen a lot like uh, maybe five times or so in in the 10 uh, I think it's not 10,000 kilometers I've driven um, so so assholes and then what will they do uh, give stupid remarks uh, uh, yesterday I had one uh, uh, you know when I'm without the top eh, I'm very very visible uh, of course in the Lamborghini everybody's watching and then you have the top off so you're very approachable eh, so you can hear what people say and people say stuff eh? so sometimes you have jerks saying stuff uh, and that happens you know uh, but overall it's a really good deal because um, you get a lot more positive responses like really a lot more than negative so um, uh, but um, yeah it's a joy to drive uh, the engine is, sound is amazing uh, the acceleration is top um, uh, it looks fantastic um, and uh, yeah um, I'm very happy with the options I have I have uh, it's it's not a standard uh, GPS system here uh, but it's, it's something from Pioneer and, and I have Bluetooth so so I and I have a very good uh, receiver and very good sound system so so that's really nice um, I enjoy um, driving it very very much um, I did little trips with my girlfriend to uh, Paris, um, to uh, Amsterdam, to Rotterdam, to London uh, also. Uh, for the first time I was driving on the left. And, um, and uh, in London especially I was surprised because I, I thought they were used to supercars there. But uh, driving this one convertible, uh, so many people were watching it, it was unbelievable. We were driving in the shopping street and I was surprised in the weekend there is not a lot of cars in London. Um, Saturday, Saturday afternoon we were driving there uh, through the shopping streets. Uh, plenty of people uh, in the streets visiting the shops but almost no cars. Uh, I'm starting to think I must have been in a zone where cars are not allowed because it was really like we were the all, almost the only car sometimes and like everybody's watching the whole street uh, so many people we were driving there like that was really surreal <laughs> um, um, yeah I also took a lot of friends and also strangers and also kids uh, uh, for little rounds uh, driving in the car and, and, and people really love it um, cops that's a problem um, yeah you get stopped a lot more um, yeah, cops also see that car and I think they like to uh, say in the evening that they stopped the Lamborghini 
and uh, that makes them feel good but um, uh, half of the time they are abusing their power and just uh, letting you stop for uh, well you're always getting picked out basically so I was stopped the first time I entered the Netherlands uh, when I just had bought the car uh, and there they it was just they were checking as they often do they pick some cars from the from the, the, the highway uh, and then uh, they check everything uh, but here like because I had a German plate um, which is a temporary plate so uh, then they they, they, they they check everything because you could be like uh, a Dutch guy driving with a temporary German plate with in that way avoid taxes so uh, so then they want to see everything eh? your your contract how much you paid for it and every uh, and all that uh, but it's stupid because I'm not even a Dutch uh, a citizen I'm a Belgian citizen so so they really don't have any business even though I'm driving in the Netherlands uh, about me paying a Dutch taxes because I'm a Belgian citizen with a Belgian residence so so but yet uh, many cops uh, just like to um, um well um put their nose into things that are really not their business and this was the case here and um and then of course i always remain polite but um yeah this guy then after the, all my papers checked out uh, he's asking me so are you able to uh, drive such a car like I don't know what his problem was but uh, uh, well I don't know anyone it wasn't pleasant that was the first time I entered the Netherlands I immediately stopped um, in Belgium I got uh, like uh, one two months uh, uh, the first two months I wasn't stopped and that was surprising uh, I like that but um, then um, yeah I was driving around some kids and um, yeah sadly uh, um, some asshole must have uh, called the cops because I was making too much noise and so they came and uh, and they want to see my papers and well my temporary German plate was not valid anymore um, and um, I had already requested for months a Belgian plate uh, which is obligatory but these guys that I had to do all kind of things import the vehicle even though it's a European vehicle I bought it European still have to import it it's totally against the European rules but that's still how it works and so I did all that but then you have to change all, all kind of things to the cars which I did too uh, and then um, my paperwork was in uh, but then it still takes a lot of time before you uh, you get your plate and so I was still driving the German plate but it was valid it, it has just like the week before it it wasn't valid anymore and so and as a consequence the insurance attached to that plate was also not valid anymore so I was driving without insurance so the assholes confiscated my car and um, and so um, that wasn't fun um, and so I will have a, a court case for that uh, let's hope uh, fingers crossed that it's not gonna cost me too much um, so yeah I, I have had all kinds of adventures with this car um, uh, uh, um, later the, the, the cops uh, in my village stopped me again to check if uh, I had insurance eh? so um, and then I was speeding uh, a little bit later and then they stopped me again some other cops uh, but then they let me go they didn't give me a ticket that was nice um, but um, yeah uh, the, the, the the roads really are also a problem in Belgium I mean the quality of the roads is like uh, I don't know I've never been in Africa but uh, I think it must be Africa of the north because um, it's really like it's terrible like around where I live it's in the city but a lot of the roads have like Kasseien you know it's 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 Kasseien it's it's not even asphalt it's like big old stones eh, that they put together and and, and you, you just destroy your your car on that uh, all cars get destroyed but Lamborghinis uh, supercars even more so so I can't take those roads so I have to take tours uh, to, to I have to drive around uh, everywhere just to 
drive on, on, on asphalt roads, and not just asphalt roads. Eh? You have traffic lights everywhere, you're waiting for nothing all the time. They didn't like think of round points yet in Belgium, like they don't, they don't, uh, they, I don't think they are informed that that exists. So that they are adding red lights even as of today, and they are adding more and more. You have all kind of also uh, speed uh, cameras, and the roads are very unsafe. Everywhere you have, um, 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 uh, everywhere you have like you don't have van rails like, like when you would like um, drive off the road that you, your car is catched. No, they what they do is they put trees poles uh, like they will make sure that if you make a mistake that you really get killed instantly eh? they they guarantee that eh? so all these things are and of course traffic jams I can't get out of my place eh, between four and six because the whole neighborhood is just locked up you can't it's not even moving so it's a real disaster and of course if people that don't know about that but the consequence of this the reason of this is of course because it's socialism and communism the roads are not free market enterprise it's uh, politicians that build roads or decide how the road should look and when a politician does something like the inverse becomes true instead of like their goal is not to get as many cars through as possible no they they, they shift it around that when they built a new road the goal is to have as little as cars that can go through and also to have as little as parking as possible eh? like that's that's their goal like they convert it around and then you have like giant uh, 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 places like just total empty should be for bicycles or, or pedestrians but of course it's just empty so it's a real problem and, um, and, and it's not going to get any better because um, even when they build a new road uh, like in Antwerp they will now start works uh, to uh, many years a lot of money to like finally do a whole circle of uh, a highway around the city because it's still not a circle up to the, today um, but it will all be tra jammed up uh, in peak hours you already know that in advance so it's not going to improve much eh? but it's and and of course the reason is that people are because it's free like if it's free people it's like it's like really communism uh, when you have uh, the food chain uh, a communistic system of course all the shops are empty because it's free so people will take as much as they want eh? because they don't have to pay and so all the shops are empty and even when the communist leaders decide to create more sausages it won't solve the problem eh? um, and it's the same with with with, with the traffic uh, today uh, it's free eh? but of course it's not free eh? you, you pay a lot of taxes for that but it doesn't work at all because uh, yeah, people don't need to pay for what they use huh? um, so the best solution would be of course that they don't steal your money yeah, because taxes hey, they just under the threat of violence take your money and then they spend it on uh, very bad investments eh? the way they built the roads just stupid eh? um, and um, and then uh, that's what you get eh? much better would be that they don't steal your money and that you are free to spend your money on the roads that you like and the roads that you want to use eh? and you get competition companies building roads private roads eh? and uh, and then it would work uh, and as long as we don't have that it won't work eh? So um, the Netherlands, it's really nice to drive here because the roads are much higher quality. Of course, the Dutch get taxed to that for that. Huh? Um, and of course, uh, traffic jams are also here a big problem, but the roads are built much better, much safer, and uh, it's much more pleasant to cruise here. Um, but I wouldn't want to live here because if you want to buy a car here, you'll pay double or triple uh, because of high taxes. So, um, I think um, Germany is uh, by far the best uh, land to, uh, to uh, and of course Italy, uh, to, to drive cars. Um, the taxes are low, uh, you get uh, unlimited speed where it is possible, uh, and that's really nice. In Italy that's not the case, but the police just don't uh, harass you uh, in a supercar, they let you. Yeah, and drive uh, uh, pleasantly and um, you know because 
yeah you get punished all the time in in countries like uh, Belgium uh, or France or, or Switzerland um, or America it's also a big problem there uh, cops stopping you all the time for stupid viol uh, so-called violations but you're you haven't harmed anyone eh? the only one harming is them harming you eh? Uh, taking your money or even your freedom eh? because they invented the rule that you can't drive higher than this on this road which is totally bullshit hmm? so um of course in a free market system uh, if private companies would own those roads they would of course compete with each other and of course one of the attractive features of a road would be how fast you can go there eh? how quick you can go through eh? um, um, yeah so um, I'm afraid we're not gonna have that uh, uh, very soon uh, uh, such a, a, a better society but it all starts with uh, thinking it through and seeing the real solution and I think that's what I'm bringing you here in this video the real solution to uh, our immense uh, problems on the road is privatization is capitalism eh, is not it and is, is is just taking it back from the rulers because every new road that is built is paid by the people that built the houses and eh? when you buy a new house in a new neighborhood the road is not paid by the government eh? no the road is paid by all those people that want a new road to get access to their house eh? so you end up paying for the house and the new road eh? and then basically the government confiscates the road eh, and says it's mine now but you paid for it eh? but they take they, they, they take ownership of it and that's theft eh? the, the road should remain a uh, property of those that paid for it eh? and then you will get much better solutions and eh? the neighborhood will make much better choices what to do with their road than the local politicians will hmm? um, so, so we just need to like stop theft. Huh? Uh, the government should stop stealing the roads from the people and let them uh, 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 let them arrange themselves their roads, huh? and also stop forbidding private enterprise of building roads. Because if I want to build, start a company and build a road, I am forbidden to do so through violence. I can't do it. Huh? That's how it is today. Huh? Uh, just like in communism you couldn't start a warehouse with food it was forbidden eh? or your private restaurant eh? or, or a private enterprise was forbidden eh? and that's still the case today um, in in uh, in the west the so-called capitalism isn't <laughs> of the west is not capitalism at all half of that society is communism eh? it's the same at schools eh? uh, or um, health uh, hospitals or uh, police eh? um, they are all uh, communist institutions they are not private enterprises that compete uh, for uh, to offer you the best service no they are all government enterprises and they suck big time um so yeah <laughs> starting with the lumbo experience and ending up here well yeah and while I'm uh, ranting, um, maybe I can say something more about cryptocurrency. No, that will be for another video. Um, about girls and Lamborghinis. Yeah, I think uh, many guys, they think that m must attract a lot of girls. Um, it has not been my experience. Like, girls are not approaching me uh, because when I'm sitting in my Lambo, or I don't get sometimes I get a smile from a girl but um, that's like much less than smiles from guys eh? or especially children like it's maybe one in ten or even not that no I would say maybe one in thirty or so um, and so um, I think that um, this is one of the worst investments if you want to seduce girls uh, you're much better off just uh, actually not uh, I, I think you're much better off watching videos of coach Corey Wayne and approaching mm, a lot of women in uh, in uh, shopping malls um, um, 
uh, with uh, confidence and uh, and uh, good humor uh, and um, honesty um, uh, and charm uh, than driving in a Lambo. <laughs> uh, you will get laid a lot more uh, that way than driving in a Lambo uh, or a beautiful car. That's really not gonna get you laid. Um, so um, and uh, especially not you're not gonna find uh, true love with that. Um, I mean, having beautiful clothes, having a nice car, having a nice condo, all these things are uh, nice, but true love, I think, um, is, uh, is about something else. Um, it's about, um, well, loving yourself for what you have, being proud of yourself, and that's not the materialistic stuff, it's much more on the on the on the on the health side but of course no, I, I think I'm I'm bullshitting now I don't know I think um, uh, when you're confident a lot of things follow from that and um, I, don't, I don't know for a man I think it's it's not so easy in life um, uh, for me it took a long time to um, to get to the place where I am now um, I have uh, not been uh, very confident uh, in my 20s, uh, I wasn't able to seduce girls and um, I was certainly not driving a Lambo, uh, um, but, um, but uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I've struggled a lot to, 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 to be able to make money with something that I really like to do, um, uh, just like I struggled a lot with finding a decent girlfriend. Uh, went through a lot of uh, effort, uh, uh, trials and errors uh, and failures uh, and uh, it took me over a decade uh, of uh, really consciously searching and trying to, to hit something that was right.